you guys, it is I, your very own Amaru, and I'd like to welcome you to a new episode of Food and the Single Guy. Now, before we continue, please forgive me because I have not shaven, okay? I need the beard to grow out a little bit because it's uneven in some sections like right here at the top. So I'm growing out my beard, bear with me. Secondly, it is a beautiful day. The sun is shining, but it's coming in and out. So that may affect the picture quality. I'm gonna work on it if that happens, but bear with me on that also. Now, thirdly, I have to say thank you to all of you who have voted for me because as I have announced on all of my social media a couple of weeks ago, Food and the Single Guy, um, this program that I've created, I think 12 years ago or something, I don't know, 13, um, Food and the Single Guy is nominated at the Taste Awards in Beverly Hills, California. In one of the categories, I'm already a finalist, so I didn't bring home the gold um, in that category. Um, in the other two categories, I am a nominee in two of the viewer's choice categories. And in one of the categories, I am even nominated with the great Andrew Zimmern from Bizarre Foods, if you remember that television show. And I used to watch Bizarre Foods on... I think it was the Discovery Channel. I used to watch it every time. So to be nominated with somebody like Andrew Zimmern for my um, cooking show on, on the web, that is a big thing. So those of you that have voted, um, I wanna say thank you. And next month, in uh, the second week of March, that is when the Taste Awards will be held in California. So I'm hoping to, you know, bring home at least something, you know, you, you never know how things work out when it comes to um, viewers choice because people vote when they want to vote. And I always have, I find it difficult to ask people to vote for me. Would you mind voting for me? This is the link. I mean, I don't want people to get bored with me or anything like that. You know what I mean? I find it very difficult to ask people to vote for me. But I did nonetheless, so hopefully, hopefully, just just, just, just fingers crossed, um, <laughs> hopefully I'll, uh, I'll win something. And if I don't win, at least I was nominated, but thank you, all of you, all right? Now, on this episode of Food and the Single Guy, I'm going to make a perfect and a delicious little snack food from the homeland yet again. In my country, we call this bachao frita, and um, what it is, it is cassava croquettes with salted fish. In Spanish, we say bacalao. In my native Creole language, language we say bachao, but it's salted fish, okay? And it is a delicious little snack food, I can tell you that much. It is, it takes a lot of time, it, it, it's a workout to make these croquettes because as you will hear me explain in the video, um, the density, the texture of cassava is a little thicker it's different than uh, potatoes. Potatoes are softer, and when you make mashed potatoes, um, it doesn't take that much of an effort to make mashed potatoes, really. But um, to make cassava mash, that is something else, okay? And you will see that in the video, okay? Now, it is not very difficult to make that, it isn't. So um, I'm sure, I'm sure at some point you, you may think to yourself, hmm, I can do this and you're going to do it, upon which I would like for you to share with me your experience, okay? Now, all the ingredients, as per me, will be listed in the information box below the video. So without further ado, let us continue. Okay, you guys, so what I have here is my salted fish, or bacalao, in my native Creole language, we call this bachao. So what I'm gonna do is, I am going to pour the um, fish into this bowl, just like so. And I'm using fillets, as you can see. And because I'm using fillets, I can get away with pouring hot water onto the fish to get rid of the excess salt. And if you're using the other kind of bacalao where the fish is still attached to the bone and the skin, you will need to boil that at least twice to first of all get rid of the excess salt but also to tenderize it a little bit. So that is why I am using 
the fillets because as I said after about a half an hour you will be able to get rid of the excess salt this way okay you guys so next what I'm gonna do I am going to rinse the fish under a running tap you see how white that water is that is the salt that came off of the fish So we're simply going to give it a rinse, a very gentle rinse, because these are fillets, as you can see, and they are very brittle. So next, what I'm going to do, I am simply going to place the fish on the edges of this bowl, and I'm going to allow the fish to drain completely. Now, back home, we would simply place the fish on a platter and then place the platter in the sun for about 20 to 30 minutes and allow the sun to do the rest. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to allow the fish to completely air dry before I cook it. All right? All right. And the reason you do that is because if you cook the fish now, it is going to generate a lot of water and that is not what you want. Okay, you guys, so it's been about a couple of hours and the fish is now completely dry. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See? It is completely dry, so what we're going to do next, we are simply going to break the fish into chunks, just like so. And like I said earlier, the reason you do this is to ensure that when you prepare the fish, it won't generate too much water okay now even though we're using fillets the fish still contains enough bones so you have to be mindful of that you want to remove them okay I'm not sure if the camera picks this up I'm gonna to try to come in a little closer hopefully you can see it but right here this section this contains a lot of bones so I'm gonna remove them just like so see See what I'm talking about? So you want to remove them. It's a little tedious, but you don't want to kill your guests <laughs> or yourself. You don't want anybody to choke on a on a fish bone. You know. That's not a way to go. Alright? Alright, so keep that in mind and make sure to remove as many of the bones as you can because I'm sure there will be one left one or two left in there that you may have missed but you know make a serious effort to remove bones when you see them okay you guys so I'm done my fish is nice and flaky as you can see and I hope that you can also see the amount of bones that I was still able to uh, get out of the fish take out of the fish and you want to be mindful of that because you don't want to choke your guests or anything so keep that in mind be very meticulous when you pull the fish apart remove the, as many bones as you can possibly remove now I'm not saying that this is 100% boneless that is not what I'm saying because some of the bones are so thin you will st there may still be one or two left in the fish okay but keep in mind any bone that you are able to spot that you're able to see remove them okay all right okay you guys now let us move on to the cassava because I am using frozen cassava this time and I'm gonna insert a picture for you right now so you can see what fresh cassava looks like but this cassava that I'm gonna be using for this dish it is already peeled it is already washed it is pre steamed as you can see on the packaging and it is very convenient okay and the way to boil cassava is similar to boiling potatoes okay you add them to water and you bring them to a boil until they're nice and tender all right so that's what we're gonna do next okay you guys and now for some of the ingredients that we're gonna be using for this dish what I have here is a large onion finely diced what I have here is a large tomato de-seeded and finely diced I have here a couple of cloves of garlic minced what I have here is my galangal root also known as sweet ginger and what I have here in this little jar is some shrimp powder 
which will add a very delicate taste to the fish. And of course, we have some flat leaf parsley over here, which I have already finely chopped. All right, so let us continue. Okay, you guys, so you know the drill on this channel. I'm about to cook. I'm gonna turn on the cooker hood. It's gonna make a lot of noise, so please bear with me. Now, to my pot, I'm gonna add a significant amount of sunflower oil. And for this dish in particular, we need a significant amount of oil because the fish soaks up all of the moisture. Now, mind you, we are not going to drink the oil with a straw. No, it's simply needed to help the fish, you know, to stay moist and not dry out. All right. So here we go. Don't get scared. It's not going to kill you. You know, anyway, so there we go. So first, what I'm going to add to the oil is a little bit of the shrimp powder. Just a little bit. Directly followed by the galangal root. And finally, the last of the aromatics, the garlic. The onions are also part of the aromatics, so we're gonna add them now. And we're gonna give it a nice stir. So my onions have been cooking for about two minutes. We are now going to add the tomato and we're gonna give it a nice stir so as you can see the tomatoes have cooked down enough so now we can go ahead and add the fish and of course we're gonna give this a good stir I'm going to cover the pot and I'm going to turn down the heat and I'm going to allow this to simmer for about five to seven minutes. Okay, you guys, so it's been a good eight minutes or so. I think we should have a look at our fish. Baby, this is looking good. It is smelling good. Mm -mm -mm. And you may have noticed that I have not added any additional salt. That is because the fish still contains enough salt to flavor the entire dish. Okay, so this is almost done. And now we will be adding the finely chopped parsley. And we're going to give that a stir. And the fish is now ready. Okay, you guys, so what I have here is my cassava. And at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I'm using pre-steamed cassava. Now, if you're gonna use pre-steamed cassava to deep fry, you can let it thaw, you can let it defrost and use it as is. But because I'm gonna mash the cassava, and especially for this dish, I still have to bring the cassava, despite the fact that it's already pre-cooked and pre-steamed, I still have to bring it to a gentle simmer, a gentle boil. And that is what I'm doing right now, because otherwise I will not be able to mash the cassava. This is going to take at least two to three minutes, all right? Okay, you guys, so the cassava is ready. I am now going to pour the cassava into my bowl. There we go. So I am now checking to see if they have removed that thick vein that is inside of the cassava in the middle of the um, root. And I think they removed all of them. Oh, but wait, let me show you what I'm talking about. So in the middle of the cassava, you can see the indentation right here. This is where the thick vein that I just mentioned would have been, but they've removed it. Okay, so you always remove that because it is very thick and it's very chewy. You don't want to eat that. So next what I'm going to do, I am going to mash the cassava. Now to the cassava, I'm adding a little bit of melted butter. So let the mashing begin. And I'm telling you, this is a workout. <laughs> Unlike potatoes, the density of cassava is so much thicker. So it's going to take a lot more work to mash it. Okay? Keep that in mind, you guys. This is a different kind of root vegetable. Potatoes are softer. All right? All right. So to the mash, I'm also going to add a little bit of milk. Just like that. And away we go again. So 
now we're going to add the fish gradually just like so right maybe just a little bit more there we go and now we're going to give this a good mix okay you want to mix it well into the cassava and the oil of the fish is also going to add texture and body to the mashed cassava so as you can see I changed mashers because this potato masher gives me a finer mash so hence and like I said earlier you guys it is a workout it is a workout but it will be worth it <laughs> okay you guys and now for the fun stuff with your clean hands you are now going to mold this dough into nice little cylindrical croquette shapes okay but before we do that let me tell you what I have here this is um, three eggs that I've whisked with some garlic salt and some black pepper and what I have here are my breadcrumbs and of course over here we have the mashed cassava and over here we have this gigantic plate <laughs> onto which we are going to um, place the croquettes so I think we are ready to proceed my hands are clean as I said so what you're gonna do you're going to take a nice amount of mash and depending on how large you want your croquettes okay if you want them very large you're gonna use more mash than I am using right now but I want them maybe this size would be nice and cute what do you think I think this would be perfect right nice bite-sized croquettes there we go so what you're gonna do next you are then going to put them in the egg wash just like so and then you are going to coat them with the breadcrumbs just like that see and you're going to place them on your plate just like so okay and now for the second one see we're gonna dip them in the egg wash just like so and then we are going to coat them with the breadcrumbs just like so and there you have it so let me go ahead and finish doing this and then I'll show you in the end what it all looks like all right and there you have it you guys I have finished shaping all of my croquettes they look somewhat similar <laughs> some of them are a little bigger thicker than the other but you know what this is not mass-produced stuff this is homemade and um, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna complain about that so as you can see on this plate on this platter I have about 21 and then on this one I have let me see 10 so out of one kilogram of cassava this is the amount of croquettes that you will be able to make if you make them you know this size and as you can see they are almost the size of my index finger a little shorter than that but um, yeah that's that so now I am ready to deep fry these bad boys oh yes so as you can see I am deep frying these bad boys and they're almost done and you want to make sure that your oil is not too hot when deep frying the croquettes so let us remove them from the oil just like so and of course I'm gonna dazzle you in the next segment with the final presentation 
And now for the big reveal. Doesn't that look gorgeous? And honey, let me tell you, they were delicious. And if they were not good, I would have shared that with you too, because as for me on my channel or on all of my social media for that matter, I always share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I share with you a slice of my life. So if I don't share with you the things that are not so glamorous, I would um, be presenting you with a lie and that is not what I do. But they were absolutely delicious. Now if you decide to try to make my cassava bacalao croquettes, let me know how they turned out because I'm always interested in hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again. Have a good one you guys. Bye.